Imagine being able to remember every single day of your life in vivid detail. Sounds impossible, right? Well, for most of us it does, but get this. Some individuals, often referred to as super-rememberers, can do exactly that. They can recall even the most minute details of their lives, from a random Tuesday in the summer of 1996 to the taste of their Christmas dinner in 2002. This remarkable ability is a testament to the power of our memory. This intricate and complex function of our brain is what allows us to learn, to grow and to engage with the world around us. It's our memory that teaches us to recognize the warmth of the sun, the smell of rain, the taste of our favorite food and the sound of a loved one's voice. It's what enables us to learn from our past, to plan for our future and to live in the now. But memory isn't just about remembering, it's about connecting. Every time we recall a memory, we're not just bringing up a static image from the past. We're actively reconstructing it, piecing it together from different parts of our brain. This process enables us to connect past experiences with current situations, shaping our understanding and perception of the world. Now, think about those super rememberers again. Their incredible ability to recall every single day of their lives in great detail is beyond most of our comprehension. But it's not magic. It's the power of memory, working at its most extraordinary level. The study of memory is a fascinating journey into the depths of the human mind. It's a journey that can help us understand not just how we remember, but also how we think, how we feel and how we experience the world. This is just a glimpse of the power of our memory. Are you ready to dive deeper? Ever wondered why you remember some things and forget others? Well, it's not entirely your fault. Welcome to the fascinating world of our selective memory. You see, our brain is a master curator, not an indiscriminate hoarder. It meticulously picks and chooses what to remember based on a variety of factors, including emotional intensity and importance. Think about it. The taste of your favorite childhood ice cream, the adrenaline rush from your first roller coaster ride, or the poignant words of a heartfelt conversation. These memories are etched deep within, aren't they? That's because our memory gives precedence to information that has emotional resonance or significance. On the other hand, mundane details like where you parked your car or the name of a person you just met at a party are often quickly forgotten. They simply don't make the cut in the grand scheme of things. So the next time you forget where you put your keys, Blame it on your selective memory. What if I told you that your memories might not be as accurate as you think? Now, that might seem preposterous, right? After all, you're the custodian of your own experiences. But let's delve a little deeper into this fascinating aspect of human memory. It turns out our memories are not static, like a snapshot in a photo album. Instead, they're more like a river, constantly flowing and changing course. Every time we recall a memory, we're not just pulling out a file from the cabinet of our mind. We're actually reconstructing it. And with each reconstruction, there's a chance for modification, a tweak here, an embellishment there, subtle changes that over time can significantly alter the original memory. You see, our brains are not perfect recorders of reality. They're more like artists, painting a picture of our past with broad strokes, filling in the details as best as they can. Sometimes they might even borrow details from other memories or even from things we've heard or imagined. It's a process known as confabulation. And then there's the power of suggestion. Ever noticed how a story changes when it's passed down the line? That's because each person adds their own spin to it, consciously or unconsciously. Now, imagine that happening in your own mind with your own memories. External influences like leading questions, misinformation or even persuasive conversations can cause our memories to warp, often without us even realizing it. But why does our brain do this? Well, it's not to deceive us. Rather, it's a byproduct of its primary goal, to help us make sense of the world and predict the future. Our memories are less about maintaining a perfect archive of the past and more about guiding us in the present and preparing us for what's ahead. So the next time you find yourself reminiscing, Remember this, memories are not set in stone. They're fluid, flexible, and ever-changing. They're shaped not just by what happened, but also by our subsequent experiences and interpretations. Our memories aren't fixed. They evolve with time, just like us. Ever smelled something and suddenly found yourself transported back in time? 
Smell and memory share a remarkable connection. This extraordinary phenomenon is due to the anatomy of our brain. The olfactory bulb, which processes smells, has a direct link to the amygdala and hippocampus, the areas of the brain that handle emotions and memory. So when you catch a whiff of a familiar scent, maybe grandma's cookies or the perfume of a past love, it's like dialing a direct line to a specific moment in your past. Unlike other senses, smells bypass the thalamus and head straight to these memory and emotion zones. This detour explains why smells often evoke stronger memories than, say, sights or sounds. Whether it's the aroma of freshly cut grass taking you back to summer picnics or the scent of old books reminding you of a quiet library, smells have the power to vividly resurrect long-forgotten moments. Our nose, it seems, has a direct line to our past. Think sleep is just for rest. Think again. As we slumber, our brains are hard at work, shaping and molding our memories. Sleep is not merely a passive state of rest, but a dynamic process where the brain engages in the vital task of memory consolidation. This is the process by which experiences and information we've encountered during our waking hours are processed and stored. Throughout the various stages of sleep, different types of memories are consolidated. During deep sleep, facts and figures, the stuff of declarative memory, get etched in. The rapid eye movement stage, or REM sleep, is when procedural memories, the how-tos, are consolidated. So that new piano piece you're learning, or that complex math equation you've been wrestling with, they get cemented during these precious hours of shut-eye. Sleep, therefore, is the great enabler, turning fleeting short-term memories into durable long-term ones. So don't skimp on your sleep, it's your brain's prime time for memory building. Memory isn't a one-size-fits-all phenomenon. We have different types of memory, each serving a unique purpose. Imagine your memory as a library, a vast repository of information. Not every book in this library is the same, right? In the same vein, not every memory we create or store is the same. The human brain in its infinite intricacy has developed different types of memories, each with its unique function. First, let's talk about episodic memory. This type of memory is like your personal diary, filled with specific events that you've experienced, your first day at school, your best friend's wedding, or even the taste of your grandmother's apple pie. These are all stored in your episodic memory. It's your personal timeline, allowing you to travel back in time, reliving moments from your past. Then there's semantic memory. If episodic memory is your diary, then semantic memory is your encyclopedia. It's home to all the factual knowledge you have. The capital of France, the formula for water, the meaning of words. This type of memory is less personal but equally important. It's your go-to for trivia nights and your secret weapon in crossword puzzles. Now let's shift gears a bit and talk about procedural memory. This one's like your personal how-to guide. It's all about skills and tasks that we perform almost automatically, like riding a bike or typing on a keyboard. You might not remember learning these tasks, but your procedural memory has got it under control, allowing you to perform these tasks without conscious thought. Each of these memory types plays a critical role. They form a complex network working together to create our individual perception of the world. They allow us to learn, adapt and grow, shaping our identities and our understanding of the universe around us. So when you think about memory, remember, it's a complex system with many moving parts. Think you have a bad memory? Don't worry, there's hope. Just as you would train your muscles at the gym, your memory can be strengthened and improved with practice. Yes, you heard it right. Your memory is not static or unchanging. It's more like a dynamic, malleable entity that can expand with the right training. One such technique that's been used since ancient times is the memory palace, a method of memory enhancement which uses visualizations of familiar spatial environments in order to enhance the recall of information. Imagine a familiar place like your home and associate each room with a piece of information you want to remember. By doing so, you're creating a mental map that can guide you to the information you need. So just as you would hit the gym to keep your body in shape, remember to exercise your brain too. Memory, like a muscle, can be trained. So get ready to flex your memory muscle. As we get older, we might find it harder to remember things, but why does this happen? Aging, my dear friends, 
is a natural part of life, and it affects all parts of the body, including the brain. When we age, our brain's volume gradually decreases, and the speed at which our brain processes information slows down. This, in turn, can lead to difficulties with memory and cognitive functions. It's as if the library in our mind, once neatly organized, starts to get a bit cluttered, and the books, our memories, become harder to find. But what exactly is happening in our brains? Well, there are several factors at play. One of them is the gradual loss of neurons, the nerve cells that transmit information. As we age, we lose neurons in certain parts of the brain, affecting our ability to recall information. Then there's the hippocampus, the part of our brain primarily responsible for forming and storing memories. As we age, the hippocampus naturally shrinks, which can lead to difficulties in forming new memories and retrieving old ones. Additionally, older people often experience decreased blood flow to the brain, which can impair memory and lead to cognitive problems. It's like trying to run a machine without enough power. It just won't work as efficiently, but don't despair. It's not all doom and gloom. While memory decline is a natural part of aging, there are several things we can do to keep our minds sharp. Regular physical exercise, a healthy diet, social interaction and mental stimulation can all contribute to maintaining a healthy brain. Engaging in hobbies, learning new skills, reading and even playing memory boosting games can help. It's also essential to manage stress as chronic stress can damage the hippocampus and disrupt memory. So taking time to relax and enjoy life is not just a luxury. It's a necessity for our memory health. Aging and memory decline might be inevitable, but with the right steps, we can keep our memory sharp. Scene script. Ever found yourself humming a tune you haven't heard in years? That's your memory at work. Isn't it fascinating how the strains of a long forgotten song can suddenly start playing in your mind, transporting you back to a different time and place? That's the power of music intertwined with memory. But how does this happen? To unravel this mystery, let's delve into the science behind it. When we listen to music, our brain undergoes a complex process. Different areas are activated, including those involved in movement, emotions and, of course, memory. This interplay results in music being a potent memory trigger. The manner in which music enhances memory is truly intriguing. Studies have shown that music, particularly songs with repetitive patterns, can help our brains form patterns that enhance memory. When we listen to a catchy song or a compelling symphony, our brain naturally latches onto the rhythm and the melody. This rhythmic pattern acts as a mnemonic device, aiding in recall. So if you're trying to memorize something, setting it to a tune could make the task a lot easier. This is why we often use songs or rhymes to teach children the alphabet or numbers. The melody helps to cement the information in their young minds. Moreover, music is not only beneficial for enhancing memory, but it also has the power to evoke specific memories. Ever wondered why a certain song can make you feel nostalgic, bringing back vivid images of a past event? This is due to the strong connection between music, emotion and memory. When we associate a song with an emotional event, the memory of that event becomes stronger. Later on, hearing the same song can trigger a memory of that event, often with remarkable clarity. So, whether it's a love ballad reminding you of your first dance, or a summer hit taking you back to a beach vacation, music and memory are inextricably linked. So next time you're trying to remember something, maybe put on some music. You never know, it might help. So, there you have it. Nine fascinating facts about memory. From the incredible power of memory to its selective nature, we've journeyed through the complex world that lies within our minds. We've unraveled the malleability of memory, its intimate connection with our senses, particularly smell, and the profound role sleep plays in strengthening it. We've discovered the different types of memory we possess and learned that its sharpness can indeed be trained and honed. We've also acknowledged the inevitable, that memory, like many aspects of our being, declines with age. However, we've also seen how music can play a beautiful role in memory retention and recall. Each of these facts, intricate and fascinating, reveal the immense power and potential of our memory. A tool, a gift, that we carry with us at all times. Remember, our memory is a powerful tool, so let's make the most of it. 
Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, 